There's nothing I can do to compare anything to Stephen Fry. I'm under real pressure now. I'm probably going to come up with it's a lot of... It's going to be awful. Um, oh, let me think about it. Oh, I don't know. He is everything you would want him to be, uh, and possibly more. Your enormous uh, intellect and clarity of thought. Particularly clarity now. Yeah, clarity. This is clarity. clarity. <laughs> yes, I'm just... uh, Stephen Fry, I welcome to the stage, and I think you're just going to be wowed. So thank you very much. Despite a, a lifetime immersing myself uh, in what I consider the provoking, beguiling, bewitching and often befuddling joy of technological development, uh, I am no computer scientist, no coder. Um, take this, if you take it at all, as the offering of a curious mind. Uh, curious in both senses of the word, avid for information and just plain odd. <laughs> Every day more stories appear uh, relating to the great confluence, the great convergence, the time that is surely coming uh, when the swelling currents of the streams and tributaries of robotics, bionics, AR, VR, gene editing, nanotechnology, brain-machine interfaces, the Internet of Things and machine learning break their banks and flow together into one mighty technological flood. The same questions are asked. Uh, what will it do to our minds, our social groupings? Is this the end of the workplace of education, medicine, commerce, and labor as, as we've always understood them? Uh, even politicians, cultural commentators, and business people are aware of these issues. But such challenges are as nothing when set beside what's coming down the pike. About uh, this idea that there's a tension, and that tension comes to a boiling point, if you want to, it's actually at a breaking point, I guess, in a tension, and then we enter a new era. Do you, do you think that's where we are right now? It, it, it's maybe a driving force, between, you know, which gives us progress, this, this, this sort of antagonism between, you know, rational thought and uh, scientific inquiry and empiricism and between feeling and emotion and obviously both can be dangerous. We need surely to redouble our efforts to understand who we humans are before we can begin to grapple with the nature of what machines may or may not be. Because the more machines rise, the more time we will have to be human and fulfill and develop to their uttermost our true natures. You actually alluded to this idea of creating time. Yes. And I think that's a lovely idea, and we've been talking about our mission is to create time for people yeah. to remove the mundane, to create time to do the creative cognitive things that then create the new wave of innovation. And I think yeah. machines play a role in that. The thing I was going to say we have to be careful about is that advertisers for generations told us that because of this particular convenience food, it gives you more time to live your life. And, and if you start talking about AI and robotics, it's a, and now you're free to live your life. It's, it becomes like frozen peas or, or, <laughs> or a TV supper. You know, that it's like, I've now got more time because I've got a, a dishwasher and a washing machine. Ask anyone a homemaker or any person who uses a lawnmower, whether they think they've got more time yeah. because they don't have to Quite. scythe the, the lawn anymore, <laughs> they'll say, bollocks, I, I'm more time poor than I've ever been. That's a very interesting yeah. point. So, so let's look forward. Why is it we filled time scything to lawnmower didn't help? Yeah. Because we filled it with other tasks we performed because probably yeah. we're task-oriented. Whether this is deep-dyed and programmed into us through evolution or whether it is simply an acculturated thing that has happened since mm. the Industrial Revolution or maybe the Agricultural Revolution, that it is our duty, that we are, we're, we're told that it's our duty to find things to do. The devil makes work for idle yeah, hands yeah. and, yeah. and you must structure. We always tell, you know, we, if you're adults, you worry that children aren't structured enough anymore. Optimists, and I think I count myself as one, assert that repeated mechanical labour backbreaking repetitive toil are but recent temporary elements of our primitive phases in agriculture and industry. They're no more natural and inevitable a part of human life than pulling oars on slave ships or picking potatoes for a feudal lord or sending children up chimneys. They say we concede such work gratefully to the machines and take comfort in Moravec's paradox, which states that high-level reasoning Precision repetition and calculation so difficult for us is easy for machines, while simple motor skills that a five-year-old human can do without thinking, such as tying up shoelaces, skipping, dancing, or catching a ball, are astoundingly difficult for machines, enough to be considered impossible for quite long into the future. So we can dance, play cricket, or baseball if you must, um, and skip into a bright tomorrow without tripping over our laces while the machines stay in school and do all our work for us.
if you're an, a poet, you know that it's much easier to write a sonnet uh, than it is to write a piece of, of, of free verse. It's counterintuitive, but you've got the framework. You fill it in. It's rather exciting. It's I'm like, good at you know, limericks. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know how it's going to be and you can fill it in. But if you're just told, no, um, the, not just the day is yours, uh, the year is yours, your lifetime is yours. It's not going to belong to the company. It's not going to belong to anybody else. It's yours. You're free. You can travel. You can do what you like. You've got this money. But people freak out. Yes. Yeah, I mean, what we're going to have to rediscover is how people can find... The balance. Yes. Oscar Wilde called it the dynamic life. He said, if you want to be a judge or a grocer or a general or a politician, you will become it. That is your punishment. But if every day you wake up and have no idea what you want to do or be, then you will never know, and that is your reward. You will constantly search. Starting pay for smart graduates in the field of AI being recruited by big corporations is $500,000 a year. That's your entry-level salary. That may annoy some of you. Um, <laughs> the big corporations and government departments do not, unfortunately, employ philosophers at any salary. And perhaps this is the time to call for a change to that. We sleepwalked into the internet age, and we're now going to sleepwalk into the age of machine intelligence and biological enhancement. What is the role of machines and AI going forward? Maybe for a large section of the population, mm. there's, there's, there's time to discover your vocation, yeah. and, and perhaps machines play a role there. I think they do, and I think education is, you know, with university and postgrad and all those sort of things, is the, how they prepare their students, and they prepare society, and they really make, make, make a noise about this. If I were the principal or chancellor of a big university now, I would instantly commission urgent reports from the head of every single department on the coming impact of AI on their discipline and the likely effect on their graduates leaving for the world of work. I would insist, too, on everyone reading everyone else's report. I would be happy to close my university until I felt everyone was on board and we were ready. Because, you know, we're living in a floodplain and a great storm is coming. The Latin for draw out is educare, so educate means <laughs> to draw out, and wow. that's, that's the point. It's, again, it's always from inside the person. You're not pushing anything in, you're not filling them up. You're finding out what's in them, and you're kindling, you're, you're lighting a fire there. I can picture some sort of AI entity with which a child could engage and which pulled so many connections that, and if a child wasn't interested in that particular connection, so for, you and they know, would self-discover, well, yeah, so which on. is what your mind seems to do all the time. So what we've created, I think, yeah. is a tool that we were, we're going to rename Virtual Stephen. <laughs> and it'll allow us to jump between ideas because I do agree. That's it. My German teacher at school wrote a report which amused my parents enormously, in which he described me. He said, "Fry continues to to, be, to behave like an intellectual grasshopper." I don't mean that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Leaping from blade of grass to, to blade, blade of grass. Of grass yeah. And all the data that, and all the connections that, that AI can make will enable curiosity both to be more satisfied but also provoked. We will all be more curious yeah. and in that curiosity perhaps find the balance between scientific inquiry, cognitive aesthetic inquiry and yes. machines will take over vacuuming the home. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> absolutely right. Well, it's been wonderful talking to you, Stephen. And Lovely you day uh, together, and uh, please come back. You Thanks bet. Thank you, Marcus. Thanks, Thank you.